Yashodanandana Brajajana Ranjana Yashodanandana Brajajana Ranjana Thank you. 
ಶ್ರೀರೂಪಾಧುಷ್ಣಾ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾದ ಸಹಗನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರಭಾ ಸಂಕೋಲೀನ ಬಂಧುಗಳಿಗೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾ ಕಾಂತ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವಿಷಭಾನುಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಾಮಿ ಹರಿ ವಂಶ ಕಲ್ಪತರೂಪ್ಯಶ್ಚ ಕೃಪಾಸು ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೇತ್ರ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇತ್ರ ನಮೋ ನಮ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸ ಹರಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಮುಖಂ ಕರೋತಿ ವಾಚಾಲ ಪಂಗುಂ ಗಂಗಾಯತಿ ಗಿರಿ ಯತ್ರಿಪಾತೇ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ದಿನ ತಾರಿಣ ಪರಮಾನಂದ ಮಾಧ್ಯಮ ಶ್ರೀ ಚಿತ್ರಮಹೇಶ್ವರ when it you come i did not do it okay so today's topic is actually then today's topic is very complex somehow this is coming now so see sarul damodar goswami is very close associate of lord chaitanya so they are not going to talk simple topics chaitanya mahaprabhu and sarul damodar who are the two closest associate of lord chaitanya and the lalit and sakar sir so this is a very intimate conversation today why sri damodar and sri chaitanya mahaprabhu were talking the procession of the goddess of fortune came by she was riding upon a golden palanquin carried by four men and bedecked with a variety of jewels so what festival is going on it's called gopanchami era panchami era panchami so jagannath goes to gundija mandir so he doesn't take purposefully his wife goddess of fortune so she becomes angry after four days so after four day she comes in in the anger mood so they carry huge palanquin so chaitanya mahaprabhu he came from gundicha to observe this festival and she is being carried in a palanquin with horses chariots elephants lot of serpents colorful flags so huge procession so she goes and then we will see she is not happy with why he left and then jagannath says i'll come back tomorrow and then he doesn't come back <laughs> so she like i will see where he went so, so you said uh, two uh, associates are very close to mahaprabhu one is sarup tamodar uh, who is ramananda uh, so both their conversation in chaitanya leela are very confidential whenever mahaprabhu talks to any one of them it's confidence eighth chapter he talks to ramananda roy right? is and 14th chapter he talks to sarup sarup damodar so we'll see it's all vrindavan he just you know he's having hera panchami and then he'll go to something else and then they will talk about something else that's mahaprabhu's me <coughs> the palanquin was also surrounded by people carrying umbrellas chamaras whisks and flags and it was preceded by musicians and dancing girls so they are you know they perform to performance in our jagannath rath yatra also some mata ji they come and do dance for lord jagannath before the procession starts so musicians girls dancing and for the pleasure of the lord 
In the angry mood, the goddess of fortune arrived at the main gate of the temple, accompanied by many members of her family, all of whom exhibited uncommon opulence. She is goddess of fortune. So they came at the main gate, and, Jagan, and Mahaprabhu and Saruda Mudra, they were sitting there. When the procession arrived, the maid servants of goddess of fortune began to arrest all the principal servants of Lord Jagannath. She began, they all began to arrest them, like, <laughs> in anger. The maid servants bound the servants of Jagannath, handcuffed them, and made them fall down at the lotus feet of Goddess of Fortune. Indeed, they were arrested just like thieves who have all their riches taken away. So some of them, they act like Jagannath servant, and here some of them. So they defeat them, so this drama happens. And then they put handcuffs and they bow down to Goddess of Fortune. So this happens, ceremony, it happens. When Lord Jagannath starts his car festival, he gives assurance to Goddess of Fortune that he will return the next day. When he does not return, the Goddess of Fortune, after waiting two or three days, began to feel that her husband has neglected her. She naturally become quite angry. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's associates saw such impudence exhibited by the maid servants of Goddess of Fortune, they covered their faces with their hands and began to smile. So this is, they cover their faces like, oh no, and they begin to smile. So they are watching, witnessing, and huge ceremony is going on. Saruda Mother said, there is no egoistic pride like this within the three words. At least I have never seen it or heard of it. This is true ego. Everything. See, we will see today in the scripture what all the emotions are there. And uh, just, it seems like this, but this is just a shadow. Like Prabhupada says, whatever is here is coming from there. But this is all not pure, that is all pure. But all the emotions are there. So here we see everything is pure. Why Krishna neglected us and they become angry? It, we have heard many stories and this is common. Man Leela in Mangad in Varsana, same principle. So he said, I have not seen such egoistic pride. When a woman is neglected, so this is Saluga Mother, when a woman is neglected and disappointed out of egoistic pride, she gives up her ornaments and morosely sit down on the ground, marking lines on it with her nails. So this is Saluga Mother mood in Vrindavan. So he's like, usually they give up all their ornaments and wear very simple clothes and sit down morose, marking lines on the floor. But this is one kind of egoistic pride, like the anger. And what goddess of fortune she is exhibiting is she is putting handcuffs and making them surrender. <laughs> so he said, this is unseen. This is unheard. This is okay, what I've seen here. Taking their ornaments and sit on the ground, marking lines with their nails. I have heard of this kind of pride in Satya Bhama, Krishna's proudest queen. I have also heard of it in the gopis of Vrindavan who are the reservoirs of all transcendental meadows. So he says, I have seen the Satya Bama in Gopis of Vrindava, but this I have not heard in the three words. But in the case of Goddess of Fortune, I see a different kind of pride. She manifests her own opulences and even goes with her shoulders to attack her husband. You know, they like, they become morose. They, they will not talk to him, Krishna. But she will take like, you know, shoulders, chalo. <laughs> And attack. So even this is unheard of for me. Saruda Goswami is telling. She therefore said, Purport, My Lord, I have never experienced anything like the behavior of the goddess of fortune. We sometimes see a beloved wife becoming proud of her position and then frustrated due to some neglect. She then gives up caring for her appearance, accepts dirty clothes. This is all Vrindavan. She then gives up caring for her appearance. You heard Chandrabali Maharaj lecture? He spoke about Man Lila. So he said she was wearing blue clothes. She changed the clothes. Blue earrings, change the earring. Mascara, remove it. Yamuna, turn away. So they, they, it's common. So this is he saying um, um, because of neglect, she then frustrated due to some neglect. She then gives up caring for her appearance, accepts dirty clothes, and morosely sits on the ground and draws lines with her nails. 
We have heard of such egoistic pride in Satya Bhama and the gopis of Vrindavan. But what we see in the goddess of fortune here, Jagannath Puri, is completely different. She becomes very angry with her husband and attacks him with her great opulence. Yeah. <laughs> Prabhu kahe kavajera manera prakar swarupa kahe gopi mana nadi sata dha. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Please tell me of the varieties of egoistic pride manifested in Vrindavan. Saru Damodar replied, the pride of the gopis is like a river flowing with hundreds of tributaries. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu become very curious when he says same as Satya Bhava and same in gopis in Vrindava. So he doesn't inquire, tell me about Satya Bhava's pride in the Varga. He immediately says, okay, tell me about the gopis' pride, the various ways they exhibit the pride. Now it's very technical. This is actually based on this. One section of Ujjwal Niramani was written by Rupa Goswami based on this particular section. Everything you will see in those books, you will see coming from Mahaprabhu's Leetas, basically. <clears throat> so he says, please tell me of the varieties of egoistic pride manifesting in Vrindavan. Sarugamuda replied, the pride of the gopis is like a river flowing with hundreds of tributaries, means of various kinds, hundreds of kinds. So we will see it's technical and many terms will come. The characteristics and mood of love are different in different women. Their jealous anger also takes on different varieties and qualities. So this is just a description. The characteristics and moods of love are different in different women. Means they all exhibit in a different way. There is wide variety how they exhibit their anger. Uh, their jealous anger also takes on different varieties and qualities. Means different behavior. While they angry, how they act, different behavior. And then he says, <clears throat> it is not possible to give a complete statement about the different types of jealous anger manifested by the gopis, but a few principles may serve as an indication. I will just give a thing because I cannot describe. There are so many varieties. <clears throat> there are three types of women experiencing jealous anger. Sober women, restless women, and women both restless and sober. So sober, clear, restless, and who have both? Any question you ask, there is little bit technical things. Uh, if you don't understand, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Just keep going. Keep trying. Is it jealous and anger or jealous? Jealous anger. <laughs> anger arising out of jealous. Jealous anger because, uh, like, you know, when the husband, sorry, when the wife is, or when the husband is showing affection to somebody else, then there is jealousy. Uh, anger coming from neglect. Like, he's supposed to come and he didn't come, he went somewhere else. So there is anger coming out of jealousy. But they all exhibit in different ways. Like yes. the reaction is that, okay. Feeling jealous, I'm anger, but I'm sober. One is restless. Like so, she will actually yeah. speak and she'll be on the stage. How to understand both? Yeah, we'll see. He will he'll explain. <laughs> this is just he's he he's giving uh, just the nomenclature and then he will explain all kind of jealous angers. <clears throat> when a sober heroine sees her hero approaching from a distance, she immediately stands up to receive him. Um, when he comes near, she immediately offers him a place to sit. So she is angry. The lover comes. And then what she does? Please come. She makes them place to sit. She is sober. <laughs> there is anger in him. <laughs> Thank you for coming. She is seeing everything. She sees the sign of uh, betray also. But she is sober. She is like, please sit down. <laughs> So, Sarup comes married, right? No, he's a sannyasi. <laughs> then how he will know this? <laughs> no, this is Vrindavan pastimes. <laughs> no, that's why I'm asking. So. It's all revelation. He knows everything that is going on there. Okay. Harshini Mataji, you have a question, Mataji? I thought... Yes, Dhanat Pranam. Dhanat Pranam. Uh, 
ियल so there everything is spiritual because everything is focused centered around krishna mm. all the emotions are there the reason we have emotions is coming from there but there everything is pure or everything is born out of love for krishna these are all emotions born out of pure love for krishna when you have that much love for krishna you consider krishna is mine that is available only in the conjugal relationship you feel krishna is mine and when krishna is mine then you will express anger because you feel he is mine just like your child if you think the child is mine and if he does something wrong what will you do you will not pay obvious senses you will scold him likewise they exhibit that but it's coming from an intense attachment out of the affection is does it answer mata ji question mata ji yes thank you prabhu ji so like proper used to say that is like i mean krishna's kavya goswami said that is like gold this is like from so there everything is as pure as gold because it's all um intense love for krishna and it is described by radharani feels man if krishna goes somewhere else and it is described that that because she knows krishna can be happy only with me she knows krishna is happy when she, he is around me and when he is devoid of my association he is actually not happy so for her happiness she becomes happy but still the focus is is happy intense love for krishna and krishna's pleasure so everything is pure okay <clears throat> so when a sober heroine sees her hero approaching from a distance she immediately stands up to receive him oh krishna ji aap aage and when he comes near she immediately offers him a place to a place to sit the sober heroine conceals her anger within her heart and externally speaks sweet words <laughs> thank you so that's what come when her lover embraces her she returns his embrace like she is like expressing as if nothing happened but then she expresses in certain way because anger is there <clears throat> the sober heroine is very simple in her behavior she keeps her jealous anger within her heart but with mild words and smile she rejects the advances of her lover <laughs> with mild words and smiles she smile and she like but you are so late right <laughs> <laughs> so with mild words she will convey the message and she will obstruct his advancement she will not let him, let him come close she is expressing with mild words but there is smile on her face <laughs> so this is like sober heroine okay good clear <clears throat> the restless heroine however sometimes chastises her lover with cruel words sometimes pulls his ears and sometimes bind him with a flower garland sometimes tie him bind him or pull his ears this is restless like she actually exhibits or chastises her like ha <laughs> yeah so this we will talk it this is only tatva <laughs> uh sarup damoda goswami describes and gives a hint it will come little bit later today we'll see all right otherwise uh, to answer chandravali comes under sober sober means always of sadhu the krishna radhanami lalita sakhi dev and vishakha they comes under restless <laughs> Chandravali <laughs> <laughs> doesn't go into mind. Darling, we come saying this. That gives much more pleasure to Krishna. We we will, but no examples today. Just that one. The heroine who is a combination of sobriety and restlessness always jokes with them, equivocal words. She sometimes praises her lover, sometimes blasting him, sometimes being indifferent. So she is mixed. Sometimes he will chastise, and sometimes she will pay respect. Sometimes she will chastise also. So mix clear? Yes, sir. Sobriety, restlessness, and a combination of both. <clears throat> he 
heroines may also be classified as captivated intermediate and impudent the captivated heroine does not know very much about the cunning intricacies of jealous anger so now little more terms are coming and then some more will come so <clears throat> actually um, um rupa goswami describes like so many various kinds of behavior and variety means pleasure and all this all this comes from shrimati radha da and she expands into all this variety just to give the pleasure to krishna but there are all this behavior her first expansion is chandavas so in that way, everything is expansion of radha okay so heroines may also be classified as captivated intermediate and impudent the captivated hero does not know very much about the cunning intricacies of jealous anger so we will see it now this may be difficult to understand but we will see the explanation we will explain it <clears throat> the captivated heroine simply covers her face and goes on crying when she when she hears sweet words from her lover she is very satisfied so who is captivated keeps on crying so she is expressing but she is covers uh, um, covers her face and goes on crying goddess of fortune is unique she will tie them and make them send it to her feet what we saw but captivated she is captivated just covers her face and goes on crying and when she hears sweet words from her lover she is very satisfied that's like okay i am okay thank you. no problem that's all don't do it again something like that both the intermediate and impudent heroines can be classified as sober restless and both sober and restless all their characteristics can be further classified into three divisions it it will keep on multiplying multiplying but here not much here this is <coughs> so captivated yes sir so you go ahead and last you go i just for the matter here talking about the era between goddess of fortune and then uh, the story topic the i mean the sort of drama that is explaining to my bro that all these are different characters or different uh, types of uh, heroines or gopis in the oh. why because he says i have not seen this kind of pride oh. not even in satyabhama and gopis of vrindavan chitane ma prabhu says oh tell me about the pride of gopis of vrindavan oh. That's how it and then he starts his cry based on ma prabhu's question all right so captivated one kind but intermediate and impudent heroines can be classified as sober restless and both sober and restless all their characteristics can be further classified into three divisions clear i'm sure not clear but okay. <laughs> <laughs> where is it clear <laughs> but the subject matter is like that that cannot come clear <laughs> just mathematical question bro intermediate and impudent and these three sober restless both sober and restless so six total like six times right six times and at a high level ha huh, and no it's actually i don't remember how many but hundreds of different varieties and it just keeps on everything if you go in that section i mean i when i read jeva dharma the third section of jeva dharma speaks about this in the half of jeva dharma i thought i cannot understand it is so complex it is so technical but once we are on that stage now we will take lot of relish relishment understanding this but at this stage i mean you read and you're like okay there is something like this good for me and that's okay propa says two kind of readings or hearing one kind is you actually go in detail if you have the adhikar for that another is just because it comes in the flow of the of the book you hear it and don't worry about it and keep going so we are in the second category just because in the flow of the book we keep going okay <clears throat> some of these heroines are very talkative some are mild some are equipoised each heroine according to her own character increases sri krishna's loving ecstasy so all of them are further divided into these three categories some are very talkative some are mild and some are like uh, um krishna says many things and they are like composed and they speak 
and some don't speak and some tick, 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 tick. <laughs> so all different varieties Prakharya Mardava Samya Sobhava Nirdosh Sei Sei Sobhave Krishna Karaya Santosh Although some of the gopis are talkative, some mild and some equipoised, all of them are transcendental and faultless. They please Krishna by the unique characteristics. So everyone has a nature. That's why they said no need to change your nature. No need to become like somebody. Everyone is pleasing to Krishna. Every nature is pleasing to Krishna. Pleasure lies in variety and Krishna enjoys that. All right? <clears throat> Ekatha Suniya Prabhura Ananda Apar Kaha Kaha Damodara Bole Barabar Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu felt unlimited happiness upon hearing this description. And he again and again requested Sarup Damodara to continue speaking. Anyone felt unlimited happiness by you? Hey, But when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard it, he went into ecstasy. <laughs> Why? Because he could completely understand what Sarudha Mudar is speaking. And it's completely taking him to those past times. It's like, you know, it's called like, you know, like uh, a, a spark increases and you immediately go into that mood. So it gave him unlimited bliss. And he told Sarudha Mudar, don't stop. On the same subject matter. And he says multiple times in this conversation, no, don't, don't stop, keep going, keep going. Is like this is Mahaprabhu's internal mood. It comes out when he talks with Ramayandra Sarudamada Goswami. His, his bhav is clear what he wants. That's why we are propagators of Raj, Rajasam, Vrindavan. Damodara ka he Krishna, Rasika Shekhara, Rasa Ashwada ka Rasha, Maya ka Levara. Damodara Goswami said, Krishna is the master of all transcendental mellows. Krishna Rasika Shekhara. He is the master of all transcendental mellows. Rasa Ashwadaka Rasa Maya Kalevara. And the taster of all transcendental mellows. And his body is composed of transcendental bliss. <coughs> so Krishna is the taster of all transcendental mellows. What are these things? What all he is discussing? These are different mellows. They exhibit different mellows. And Krishna is the taster of all the different mellows. Is Rashita Shekhar, he is a Rasa Aswada. Aswad means taste. He is the one who tastes. And then his body is composed of transcendental bliss. His body is composed of transcendental bliss. Some reflection on that. His body is composed of transcendental bliss. Huh? Satchita Nanda, let's. Um, see this. This is from Nectar of Devotion. I was just reading Nectar of Devotion, I think, yesterday. So, this paragraph came. So, I put it purposefully from Prabhupada's Nectar of Devotion. In the Hari Bhakti, Sudhodaya, Prahlad Maharaj, while satisfying Lord Nasimha Dev by his prayer, says, My dear Lord of the Universe, I am feeling transcendental pleasure in your presence and have become merged in the ocean of happiness. I now consider the happiness of Dhammananda to be no more than the water. In the impression left by the cow's hoof in the earth compared to <clears throat> this ocean of bliss. So Prahlad Maharaj is telling when he saw the darshan of Lord Nashinda Dev, by your presence I am feeling transcendental bliss. So now I can say that those who are impersonalists derive no pleasure in comparison because he was meditating on the Lord. He was Prahlad Maharaj is known for smara. He was constantly meditating on the Lord. But when Nashinga came in front of him, he felt such transcendental bliss. The Lord is the condensed transcendental bliss. When anybody comes in front of the Lord, he is taken into a divine ecstasy. Because the Lord carries that. That's why whoever, how much ever angry they are, the moment Krishna comes there, because he is the condensed bliss, his presence is just, just waters down all their 
Why? Because he has that. Otherwise, see, wherever he goes, devotees, devotees in Vrindavan, they think, I wish I can see Krishna today. Why they want that? Because Krishna's personality is condensed bliss. Does it make sense? And that's why the people who worship him in personal form cannot derive that place. It's very different when Krishna comes and it's otherwise that's why Krishna is like you know the like wherever he goes everybody is like be trying to be around Krishna because for a moment to be around Krishna that remains an experience for them throughout the source of their meditation till they see Krishna again. Yeah. <clears throat> Prema Maya Bapu Krishna, Bhakta Prema Dhina, Shuddha Prema Rasa Gurne, Gopika Pravina. Krishna is full of ecstatic love and always subordinate to the love of his devotees. The gopis are very much experienced in pure love and in the dealings of transcendental mellows. <laughs> Gopikara preme nahi, rasa bhasya dosha, ata eva krishnera kare paramasantosha. There is no flow or adulteration in the love of the gopis, therefore they give Krishna the highest pleasure. These are all very deep tattvas. Like if you see here, gopikara prema nahi, rasa bhasya dosha. Have you heard about rasa bhas? Rasa bhas means it's pure. Or the it's not contaminated by any other mellow. Every Vrajavasi has a particular mellow. It's pure. So, Gopi Kara Prema Nahi Rasa Bhas Dosh. There is no Rasa Bhas Dosh in the love of the Gopis. And Rupa Goswami has written two chapters on Rasa Bhas. And he describes various kinds of Rasa Bhas. Where he describes this? Nectar of Devotion. In, I think, chapter 55 at the end. Two chapters he composed on this topic. So there is no such that's Atta Eva Krishna Kare Paramasantosha. That's why Krishna is completely pleased. Like Paramasantosha is completely satisfied. <clears throat> you don't understand? It's okay. I also don't understand. Keep going. This is coming in a flow, so keep going. But something will stick. It is going to give us some understanding of what they are talking. At least a uh, impression will remain. Okay, what they talk when they come together? What kind of discussions they have? Vama eka gopi gana, dakshina eka gana, nana bhave karaya krishna, rasa ashwadana. Have you heard about Vama and dakshina and madhya? You have heard? Vama is left, dakshina is right. Vama and dakshina is left wing and right. And then madhya. Vama eka gopi gana, dakshina eka gana, nana bhava karaya krishna, rasha ashwadana. The gopis can be divided into left wing and the right wing. Both wings induce krishna to taste transcendental mellows by various manifestations of ecstatic love. There is no examples given here. Just tattva. If you see um, um, Ujjwal Nilamani, he gives the tattva and then he gives examples also. So it's more elaborate. He explains it kind of. So there are two kinds, left wing and right wing. Both wing gives transcendental pleasure to Krishna. Gopi Gana Madhya Shrestha, Radha Thakurani, Nirmala Ujwala Rasa, Prema Ratna Khani. <coughs> Gopi Gana Madhya Shrestha, Radha Thakurani. Among all the Gopis Gana, Madhya Shrestha. The topmost in Madhya is Radha Thakurani, Nirmala Ujwala Rasa. Prema Ratna Khani. Of all the Gopi, Srimati Radharani is the chief. She is the jewel mine of ecstatic love and the source of all purified transcendental conjugal meadows. The highest, the topmost position. So I'll keep going. All right. Vaya se madhya mate ho, sobhave te sama, gada prema bhave te ho, nirantara vama. Radharani is grown up and her character is equipoised. She is always deeply absorbed in ecstatic love and always feeling in the mood of left, left wing gopi. So she is in the Vama category. 
गोपी हु इज ऑलवेज इगर टू बी जेलसली एंगर हु इज वेरी एंथिक फॉर दैट पोजिशन हु इमीडिएटली बिकम्स एंग्री वेन डिफीटेड who is never under the control of a hero and who always opposes him is called a bama of a left wing <laughs> okay once again this is actually from rupa goswami's definition see prabhupada is giving all these details in the purports chitan sridam the purports proper they are they are very uh, detail oriented and he is quoting the verses and which verse and where they are taken So this is the definition he gives for left wing, the gopi who is always eager to be jealously angered. Small instance, shall we come in? <laughs> Small instance, who is very enthusiastic for that position, like <laughs> eager, <clears throat> who immediately becomes angry when defeated. Say one word. <laughs> We really care. <laughs> immediately becomes angry when defeated. Who is never under the control of a hero. <laughs> always. At her feet only, then she's okay. <laughs> and who always opposes him is called Bama or a left wing gopi. And Nirantar Bama Shiva Tadhar was always in that mood. And one step higher is Lalita Sathya. <clears throat> Lalita Sathya Bama Sabhave Mana Uthe Nirantar. de uthe ananda sagara because she is left wing gopi her womanly anger is always awakening but krishna derives transcendental bliss from her activities the moment she was angry it gives unlimited pleasure to krishna so you know why she becomes angry because she knows it gives unlimited pleasure to krishna and krishna is completely satisfied by seeing that anger but in that anger there is intense love The progress of loving a face between a young boy and young girl is by nature crooked, like the movement of a snake. Because of this, two types of anger arise between a two. Because of this, two types of anger arise between a young boy and girl: anger with a cause and anger without a cause. So sometimes she becomes angry with Krishna. There is a cause. Sometimes she becomes angry with Krishna. There is no cause. and actually when uh, there is a cause um, then krishna can do something to mediate that anger when there is no cause it's very difficult to actually specify because <laughs> there is no understanding of what is the cause for it eta suni bada prabhura आनंद सागर कहा कहा कहे प्रभु बोले दामोदर ऐसे जितने महाप्रभु हर दिस टॉक्स हिज ओशन ऑफ ट्रांसेंडेंटल ब्लिस इंक्रीज्ड ही देयरफॉर टोल्ड सरूप दामोदर गो ऑन स्पीकिंग गो ऑन स्पीकिंग एंड द सरूप दामोदर कंटिन्यूड अगेन जितने महाप्रभु वाज वेरी मच प्लीज्ड बाय हियरिंग दिस डिस्क्रिप्शन एंड ही टेल्स टेल अस मोर टेल अस मोर दामोदर गो ऑन स्पीकिंग आडी रोदा महाभाव राधिकार प्रेम Vishuddha Nirmala Yai Chheta Shavana Hema Shrimati Radha Rani's love is a highly advanced ecstasy. All her dealings are completely pure and devoid of material touch. Inch indeed, her dealings are ten times purer than gold. So, <coughs> okay, her uh, her love is highly advanced ecstasy. All her dealings are completely pure and devoid of material touch. Therefore, they are compared. They Krishna's Kavira. Sarup Damodar says they are ten times purer than gold. Gold is considered very pure because any impurity is removed. So her love is ten times purer than gold. So pure. Krishna Radharshan yadi paya achambite nana bhava vibhushane haya vibhushite. As soon as Radharani gets a chance to see Krishna, her body is suddenly decorated with various ecstatic ornaments. as soon as she sees she sees krishna uh, what happens means 
what happens as soon as she sees Krishna? <laughs> is it, I mean, uh, ecstatic, it will be like more ecstatic, right? That's what they're comparing with the ornament, but actually, it will be more. Ecstatic ornaments is tears will come from my yeah. eyes. As soon as she is Krishna, she exhibits all these things. And what does, what does, this is a very important point, and what does Krishna feel when he sees the ecstatic symptoms in her? Huh? He becomes very happy. When he sees, like, imagine you see somebody and they, by seeing you, they have tears in their eyes. How will you feel? Just by seeing you, they have tears in their eyes. So as soon as she sees Krishna, uh, she develops all ecstatic symptoms. This gives Krishna a lot of santosh, satisfaction. That's why my, my Guru Maharaj says that uh, uh, when we become ecstatic, we, become, we want to become ecstatic for Krishna's pleasure. When we are chanting and we are absorbed or we cry or we have a feeling of gratitude, we want that ecstatic symptom because it gives pleasure to Krishna. Everything we want to do is to give pleasure to Krishna. But when Krishna sees us ecstatic, it's not about my pleasure. It gives Krishna happy. It makes Krishna happy. That's why we want to become ecstatic. But the purpose of a pure devotee in ecstatic feeling is not his pleasure. Does it make sense? It is we become ecstatic or Krishna becomes happy. When he sees, because of me, by seeing me, he doesn't, he doesn't understand. I can... <laughs> But this effect that there is happening because of me. He feels it's actually it's actually the love of pure devotees. It's the love of pure devotees, and naturally you become happy by meeting somebody who love you very much. So when they have pure love, they become ecstatic, and when Krishna sees the pure love for him, he becomes completely satisfied with that. Clear. <clears throat> Ashta Shatvik Harashadi Vyavichari Yandra Sahaja Prema Vimshati Bhava Alankara. The transcendental ornaments of Srimati Radharani's body include the eight Satvikas or transcendental symptoms of 32 Vyavichari Bhavas, beginning with Harsha or jubilation in natural love, and the 20 Bhavas or ecstatic emotional ornaments. There is a detail in the purport, we will not go there. It's it's very detailed. Prabhupada describes what are the 33 web, um, Vyabhichari Bhavas. But basically, these are all the symptoms she exhibits when she sees Krishna. How she exhibits her love for Krishna. And that gives Paramasatosh to Krishna. So be pleasure to Krishna. Eta Bhava Bhushaya Bhushite Shri Radhi Shri Radhara Anga Dekhite Uthale Krishna Sukhabdi Taranga. When Srimati Radharani's body manifests the ornaments of many ecstatic symptoms, the ocean of Krishna's happiness immediately displays transcendental waves. It flows into ecstasy. When, whenever she sees him, he exhibits transcendental ecstasy. When he sees her exhibiting transcendental ecstasy, he goes into ecstasy. Like Taranga in the waves of transcendental happiness. Just by seeing her exhibiting. And ecstasy. Kila kinchita di bhavera suna vivarana ye bhava bhushaya radha hare krishna mana. Now, here a description of different ecstasies beginning with kila kinchita. Uh, with this ecstatic ornament, Srimati Radharani enchants the mind of Krishna. So, there are various names Mahabhav, Arivra Bhav, Mahabhav, and this is one name is called kila kinchita bhav. So, uh, Sarudama is going to describe when she exhibits. So, you know, she has various moods when she exhibits her love for Krishna. And they have different names. And there is a description of what name, what symptoms are exhibited by what name. I mean, so Chidani Mahamadu is very absorbed that Sarudama is giving the details of her Mahabhava. Now, here a description of different ecstasies beginning with Kila Kinchita. With these ecstatic ornaments, Srimati Radharani enchants the mind of Krishna. So this is the last one we discussed. I mean, not the last slide, the last bhav we discussed today. Dada Dehi Krishna Yadi Chunite Kare Mana Dana Ghati Pade Yabe Gomana. So now uh, he's explaining um, 
yeah. we've seen a short proper purport there also ki when this kila kinchita bhav appears this is the last part hear it carefully um uh, it will help us to understand her mood more and help us to remember her mood through this description when shri krishna shri shrimati radharani wants to touch her he prohibits her from going to the spot where one can cross the river yamuna we will we, i'll explain this after third verse together you know dan ghati dan ghati dan ghati you know have you heard about um, where krishna asked taxes they are cowherd girls so they carry milk and butter and then when krishna crosses that krishna says you are carrying such things pay the taxes first so what is the tax we cannot describe that pay the taxes first so then there is you know just the conversation all right let's have we can say at this point of time yabe ashi mana kare pushpa uthaite sakhi age chahe yadi gaya hata dite approaching her krishna prohibits shrimati radharani from picking flowers he may also touch her in front of her friends so sometimes she is picking flowers and uh, krishna obstructs her from picking flowers and there are many past and connected to that and these are different instances when shrimati radharani exhibits kila kinchita bhav and then sarudamala goswami also describes what it what symptoms are exhibited in this kila kinchita bhav ऐसा She actually wants Krishna to come and obstruct and ask taxes. These are nine meter past tense, occasional past tense of the Lord. And then, <clears throat> um, when she is picking flowers and Krishna obstructs her, then also these are the two instances. Sir, the Madhva Goswami says these kind of symptoms are exhibited. Sometimes this symptom, sometimes this symptoms, and there are the whole description of her mood and bhava. Whenever she meets Radha Rani, leaves her house, she is always well dressed and attractive. It is her womanly nature to attract Sri Krishna's attention, and upon seeing her so attractively dressed, Sri Krishna desires to touch her. The Lord then finds some fault in her and prohibits her from from going to the river crossing and stops her from picking picking flowers. Such other pastime between Sri Mati Radha Rani and Sri Krishna. This proper spell too. This proper spell too, and he is describing in detail there. Being a cowherd girl, she must be rather than regularly carries milk in a container and often goes to sell the milk to the other side of Yamuna. To cross the river, she has to pay the boatman, and and the spot where the boatman collects his fare is called Dan Ghati. Lord Shri Krishna stops her from going, telling her first you have to pay the fee, then you will be allowed to go. This pastime is called Dan Keli Lila. Similarly, if she must be rather than wants to pick a flower, Shri Krishna claims to be the gardener's proprietor and prohibits her. she is taking the flower and he is like you know who is the who is the owner of this garden to me how can you take flower from my garden and then then he again prohibits and he says first we have to pay the tribute <clears throat> radhani shyness arises due to shri krishna's prohibitions and ecstatic loving bodily symptoms called kila kinchita bhava are manifested at this time pride ambition weeping smiling envy fear and anger are the seven ecstatic loving symptoms manifested by a jubilant shrinking away and these symptoms are called kila kinchita bhav so here is a description of this particular mood there is pride ambition weeping smiling envy fear and anger <laughs> Simultaneously, all seven present. That's called kila kinchita bhav. So there is like uh, there is anger. There is anger like how can you how can you stop me from taking this? How can you stop me from picking the flower? Suppose you went to somebody else's garden to pick the flower. The owner comes and says, "Hey, fear will come." Right? 
but at the same time there is smile because the love is there so there is fear there is smile there is envy how can you stop so there is envy there is smile and there is weeping because of his ecstatic he is condensed bliss so immediately she exhibits that symptoms of ecstasy and then there is pride pride means who are you to stop me <laughs> to take the flowers i will take the flowers from this garden from this garden from this who are you so there is pride there is ambition this is what i want and there are many kinds of ambition so pride ambition weeping smiling envy fear and anger are the seven ecstatic loving symptoms manifested by a jubilant shrinking away and these symptoms are called tilakinchita bhav is it clear <laughs> okay we'll simplify it next time in our discussions arasata bhava ashi sahaje milaya sahaje means natural um arasata bhava ashi sahaje milaya ashta bhava samilane mahabhava haya there are seven other transcendental ecstatic symptoms and when they combine on a platform of jubilation the combination is called mahabhava so these symptoms seven other ecstatic symptoms when they all combine which is also described then it becomes mahabhava so there is a description of what is kila kinchita bhava what is mahabhava and how the the different moods of her basically that's what chitra mahaprabhu wants to know tell me about this uh, jealous anger in them and then he is describing how anger manifests and what kind and then he starts with there are various kinds of gopis immediately goes shrimati radharani and he tells a this detail about her anger and how she feels angry and what ex- how she exhibits the emotions when she feels angry garva abhilasha bhaya shushka rudita krodha asuya haya aramanda smita the seven combined ingredients of mahabhav are pride ambition fear dry artificial crying anger envy and mild smile this mild smile because anger is there so how can you smile with anger so there is anger and then so you cannot understand but you can understand also because there are multiple symptoms because there is fulfillment of desire and obstruction of desire simultaneously fulfillment of desire obstruction the same with this that's why there is smile there is anger there is envy there is dry artificial crying fear ambition pride nana swadu ashta bhava ekatra melana yahara ashwa de tripta haya krishna mana there are eight symptoms of ecstatic love on the platform of transcendental jubilation when they are combined and tested by krishna the lord's mind is completely satisfied dadi khanda ghrita madhu maricha karpura elachi milane yaiche rasala madhura indeed they are compared to a combination of yogurt candy ghee honey black pepper camphor and cardamom which when mixed together are very tasty and sweet this is quite elaborate so these seven items when you taste it tastes very sweet like why there are seven emotions so one is compared to like honey which is sweetness one is compared to black pepper with like mirchi like you know anger so camphor cardamom yogurt candy and ghee so these are this is how they have explained how when you make combination it tastes very sweet likewise the combination of these symptoms just together kokila chin kinchita bhava it is very satisfying to lot of Candy. Candy? Toffee? Toffee? Sugar? Sugar. Thank you. Ehi bhava yukta dekhi radha sya nayana sangha mahai te sakha paya koti gana Lord Krishna is thou- Lord Shri Krishna is thousands upon thousands of times more satisfying more satisfied when he sees Shimati Radharani face lit up from this combination of ecstatic love then he is by direct union with her when he is with her it's way 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 less pleasurable to krishna then when there is uh, obstruction and this kilakinchita bhava and she is angry 
and then she has this obstruction then the pleasure the sadhus krishna derives is millions of times lesser than when they meet together so these past times are most ecstatic past times like whether it is dan keli or you know wherever understood clear so the the pleasure for krishna lies in when there is ma when there is like that's why she always nirantara bhavana she always exhibit bhavana nature mama is like left or like at small instance she becomes angry and when she becomes angry she has tears she has mild smile on her face and then she has a pride yes bye so when there is a combination of these symptoms or any then it gives maximum santosh to krishna so she knows how to give maximum pleasure to krishna so she always acts in such a way and krishna is always submissive to her that's that's mama that's us <clears throat> okay last slide for today may the sight of shrimati radha rani skilla kinchi the excessive which is like a bouquet bring good fortune to all when shri krishna blocked radha rani's way to the dan ghati there was laughter within her heart her eyes grew bright her tears flowed from her eyes reddening them due to her sweet relationship with krishna her eyes were enthusiastic and when her crying subsided she appeared even more beautiful so it is said that she exhibits like the moment there is obstruction she exhibits all the seven and then they subside and when they subside she looks even more beautiful and this is like so there is a very deep analysis by sir dr goswami on the bhav so that's all we have for today so <laughs> when i was making i thought this very simple when i came here i went oh no <laughs> it is very complex to explain <laughs> but <clears throat> chetan charitamrita many sections are like this and this is the source of all the works of our predecessors they arise from i mean i should not say no because actually chetan charitamrita was written after the books of the goswamis because when he wrote rupa sarada had already left the original message of the attack mood was given by rupa goswami that's a proper says we have yeah, for rupa no so navidya na hai na because that is coming from Uh, mahaprabhu's teachings to rupa goswami and we will see those teachings also uh, and then he wrote books and krishna's kavita goswami is describing here and there in different <coughs> and the past time itself contains everything mahaprabhu's past time is actually krishna leela from all perspective because he is krishna himself and also his talks are always krishna that's a true mahaprabhu and his teachings we can understand vrindavan imagine if mahaprabhu does not give us any of these things how can we ever understand the mood of him is it possible to understand lord krishna without sijitan and mahaprabhu he is telling us that's why we are having an understanding of oh this happened this happened this happened everything is coming from here and they elaborate on that and this is originally the conversation between swarup damodar and chaitanya mahaprabhu and where is krishna's kavira goswami getting these teachings from salud damodar diary he has a diary that he gave to raghunath das goswami and he spoke and krishna's kavira goswami he heard he gave that diary to he gave that diary to krishna's kavira goswami and these things are spoken by salud damodar goswami so we can understand his understanding he is telling to chaitanya mahaprabhu actually mahaprabhu is like extremely blissful Here it is, and he wrote in his diary. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that uh, that all all of your Vaishnavas. So the Prabhupada writes, we saw that in that Lila, which is that uh, uh, what? Ha huh? ha! Huh, washing feet during Gundi uh, Cha Marjana. In that Lila, he says we are all followers of the Mother Krishna. Originally coming from there. And Sarup Damodar is Lalita Devi, and under him comes Rupa Goswami, and then he expanded. But it's actually Lalita Devi service to create service for Shrimati Radha, 
and then she gives a sign to his most confidential servant Rupa Goswami. And Rupa Goswami, Sarudamuda Goswami, there is no book for us written by Sarudamuda Goswami. Huh? And Rupa Goswami elaborates because uh, naturally Saruda he works under Saruda Muda Goswami. And these things are personally told by Lord Chaitanya Rupa Goswami also. And to Sanatana Goswami also. He actually gave everything required for one person to go back to God. From here to here. Like, you know, Vidhi Mark is given by whom? All the 64 items of Vidhi Mark given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. If you see Sarup Damodha, Mahaprabhu's teaching to Sanatana Goswami, he writes all the 64 items we should perform, purify your mind. And then he gives everything. And the whole movement is actually orchestrated by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And through his various associates, the teachings are being brought. If we follow teachings as it is, success is guaranteed. Everything is very good. Just has to be followed as it is. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> so, at some point, uh, Mother Lakshmi's bhav will also be covered again, or Mahaprabhu just wanted to hear about no, no, Right now, he's in that mood, but we'll see, it'll continue. But right now, you know, it's actually Lakshmi Devi is doing her thing, hmm. Mahaprabhu, Sarada, Mata, Gosam, they are doing their thing. They saw and they fell down and one, see Mahaprabhu, he got one word from Saruda Mother Goswami and he said, tell me about this. And then he started speaking and he said, yeah. Tell me some more details on this. So Mahaprabhu is kind of instigating. That's what he did when he met Ramananda. I have come here to discuss Krishna Katha with you. Eight days, he is hearing about Krishna. Actually, Sasmi uh, Thakur says, don't read these chapters. He said, that. He said don't read these chapters until the heart. But Prabhupada did not put that restriction on these chapters. So if you enough, then go through it. But systematic study of these chapters should be done only at an advanced stage of devotion. Otherwise, you know, Prabhuji, even if you read it, nothing will understand. This, this path of Krishna consciousness is not something we can understand by reading. You know, we have to connect it. The connection I will, when Mahaprabhu gives, Mahaprabhu gives. I don't have any connection with, with these topics, but I'm just covering because they're coming in a flow. And just it gives us an understanding of what's in there. One option is I remove this chapter and go to the next one. Let's go through it. Let's see what's there. We understand 1-2%, that's okay. But since we are going in the flow of Chaitanya Charitamrita, let's go to the flow. And there is no restriction by the Prabhupada and others that don't read. Just read, read, read. When I did first time, when I came here, <laughs> like, <laughs> this is going on here. And just keep reading, keep reading, keep reading, keep reading, keep reading. But at some point of time, this will become like very important topic for us in future. Right now, I know it's there. So when I need, I can go and refer back. But before that, I have to purify myself to approach them and to access them. Till that time, you know, it's there and it will remain there and it will live in theory for us. So, Please forgive me if I spoke anything wrong. It's a humble servant. My obeisance is to all of you.